Hey, how's it going everybody? In this short video, I want to demonstrate how we can add Google Analytics to a Next.js 14 application that uses the app router. And the implementation of Google Analytics that we're going to be covering is GDPR compliant. So I have not seen any good video on this, so I thought I'd make one. And uh, you have to excuse me, I've not uploaded in quite a while, so I'm still a little bit rusty. But this is what we're going to have as an outcome. You can see in the bottom left corner, I have a small cookie banner that I can either decline or accept, and it works just as you would expect. So if I go ahead and accept this cookie banner, you can see that in local storage on the right hand side, I have this cookie consent set to true. Now, if I go ahead and refresh the website, you can see the cookie banner doesn't load anymore because of course, if the user has accepted the cookie consent, then it doesn't need to ask again. Now, if we delete this value from local storage and reload the website, you can see in the bottom left hand corner, the banner appears again because it didn't find any cookie in uh, the local storage. And now we can go ahead and decline it, for example, and it also works as expected. So if I reload the website, then it won't show again uh, because the cookie consent has already been set to false. So we're gonna take a look at how this is built up. So before we jump into the details of the code, let me briefly mention that all the code that you're going to be seeing in this video is also going to be linked in a GitHub repo down in the description right above the like button. So go ahead and check that out after the video. So I have bootstrapped a next application using create next app, and I have modified it to add the cookie banner. In this layout file, we have pretty much everything that we need. First off, we have the Google Analytics component and we have the cookie banner. So those are the two key constituents. In the Google Analytics component, you can see that we are passing in the measurement ID as a prop. So where do you get this measurement ID from? If I open up my Google Analytics uh, dashboard, you can see that there's this one page web stream details that gives you this measurement ID, uh, which I have anonymized in this case. But uh, for you, this will be your measurement ID, which you need to copy and paste into this place right here. So now let's go into a little bit more detail on the Google Analytics component. When we look at this Google Analytics component, there's one thing that we need to be aware of, and that is that Next.js is a single page application. So the first render comes from the server and all the subsequent navigation and routing happens on the client side. So what that means is basically that when we have a user who visits our website and uh, starts navigating through the website, we wouldn't be able to see that because all of that happens on the client side. So we would be missing out on really valuable information if these navigations between the pages were not sent to Google Analytics. So what we do in this component is that whenever the URL within the browser window of the user changes, we record a page view event. Uh, so let's see how that's done. First off, you'll see at the very top, we are using the client. Uh, so all of this is happening on the client side. And then further below, you can see that I'm using search params and path name. So basically we need those to construct the URL that you, the user is currently on. Then after that, we have this small check, which checks that the window object is available and if the Google tag function is defined. And if that's the case, we're going to send the page view event to Google Analytics, yeah? So in effect, this use effect statement over here, it is triggered whenever the URL in the browser window of the user changes. And whenever, whenever that's the case, we send one of these um, events to Google Analytics telling it that we have a page view event. Then further below, you can see that we have script tags. So these script tags are the tags that we need to initialize Google Analytics within our application. So first off, we have uh, adding Google Analytics um, with a specified measurement ID. So that's the one that's being passed down as a prop. And then after that, we're initializing Google Analytics with the specified measurement ID. Other thing that's worthy to mention here in this second part is that by default, so before the cookie banner is uh, pressed at all, 
we set the tracking to denied. So that's important to stay compliant. Um, we need to make sure that by default, the user is not being tracked. So that is exactly what we accomplish with this small snippet uh, at the bottom. So that's the Google Analytics component. Now let's move on to the cookie banner component. All right, so now let's take a look at the cookie banner component. The cookie banner component looks a little bit more intimidating than it is uh, at first sight. So let's work our way through this. At the very top, we have two states. The first state is the consent state. So if the user has accepted our cookie, then we can set it to true. If the user has declined our cookie, we set it to false. And if it is unset because the user has visited the website for the first time, we have it at the default value null. The next thing that we have is a loading state. This loading state is necessary because when the browser retrieves the value from local storage, that takes time on the client. And we are basically setting this uh, uh, loading state to true for as long as it takes for this value to be retrieved from local storage. Then um, further below, we have our first use effect statement. And what this does is it gets the stored cookie value, right? So we have this helper function. Um, if I go into it, uh, we can see that we are basically retrieving a value from local storage. Uh, so over here, you can see that we're setting this constant to this sticky value. I called it sticky value because when you save something, the cookie to the um, local storage of, uh, uh, of someone's browser, then it's basically stuck in the browser. And so that, that, that's what we're retrieving right here. And then we're going to check if the sticky value is not null or undefined, in which case we are going to parse the JSON value and return it. Now, if there is some sort of error, um, because for example, someone has tampered the cookie value in some sort of malicious way and we can't parse it, then we are returning a default value, uh, which we're also passing into the function. So back in our cookie banner component, we are doing all these things. We're getting the uh, cookie value from the local storage. We're setting the cookie value once that is done. And then after that has happened, we are uh, setting the loading state to false because we have retrieved the value successfully. The next thing that we have over here is another use effect statement, which is triggered whenever the value of cookie consent changes. So for example, when the user visits the website and clicks on the accept button, on the cookie banner, then this use effect would be triggered. And what happens is that we subsequently need to update the Google Analytics tag in order to tell it that we are now granting permission to tracking. Yeah, so that's basically what happens over here. Um, conversely, if we uh, if the cookie consent status changes towards the value false, um, then uh, of course, we need to update the Google tag so that it is not tracking the user. So that is exactly what this use effect statement is for. And at the very bottom, we have the code that makes up the small banner at the bottom of our site. And we have the option to either set it to visible or hidden, depending on the value of cookie consent. So when this is true, when cookie consent is true, then it is not visible. And when it is false, it is not visible. Only when it is null, this ternary operator um, is set to visible and shows the component. And I mean, that makes sense. You only want to show the cookie uh, banner whenever the uh, cookie has not yet been set. Yeah, so that's all for this video. Um, I hope it helps you out. I, I hope it helped you set up um, uh, Next.js together with Google Analytics. And I'll be posting more regularly again. Uh, so um, I uh, hope that this video helped you out. And we'll see each other in the next video. And uh, yeah, perhaps there's one more thing to mention, which is I do have Twitter now. I'm going to be linking it down in the description. So yeah, feel free to follow me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.